Let's, let's take this concept of quick values and let's look at a way that we could actually use this for hunting for certain types of activities. So I'll clear out this quick values and we're just kind of returning back to our last 24 hours worth of events. All right, so let's try, let's try a particular query. So let's say that I was interested in network traffic, but not just any network traffic. Maybe what I'm interested in is network traffic coming from an internal IP address. Well, because of the way that Graylog enriches my data, it provides a field that would help me query for that particular uh, uh, type of traffic. And the way that I would do that is source underscore IP. Now you notice as I'm typing here, it's auto populating several different matching field names here, but these aren't the ones that I'm looking for. Source underscore IP underscore is internal. Now that's the one I'm looking for. So I'll click that and let it auto complete it for me. So I want to see traffic where source IP is internal is equal to true. Now you notice that took me from 6.7 million events down to 3.2. That's a pretty good reduction in my data. But I want to further filter my data to say I also only care about traffic destined for an internal IP. So traffic from an internal IP talking to an internal IP. So I'm just simply going to add that to my query here. And dest IP is internal, true. So that took me from 3.2 million down to about 2 million events. <clears throat> Still more than I probably want to poke through manually. But again, remember, that's what our quick values is for. So now what I can do is with the results that have been returned here, I'm going to add the source IP to the quick values view. So I can just kind of get a summary of who are the biggest talkers in this, uh, in this data set that have co that's come back to me. So, okay, so there I can see my top five source IPs, right? 10.16.202 and so on and so forth. Now, another interesting thing that I can do is not just looking at the top talkers, I could also look at the bottom talkers if I was interested. And how I would do that is by hitting customize, configuration, and just simply flipping this bit here from top values to bottom values. And now what it's going to show me is here are the bottom source IPs. So again, that might, mean not, that might not mean much to me now, but we'll revisit that same tactic here in just a minute. I'll return that to top values here. All right. So using our stacked fields, one way that I would make this chart a little more useful is saying, I want to add the dest IP to this same view so that I can see essentially the prevalence of the top talkers in pairs. So let's do that. We'll go to customize configuration and I'm going to add dest IP to my stacked field list here. Hit update. So this is a really helpful way of saying I want to see the top talkers in pairs, right? So I can see that 16202 is talking to 102119 and so on and so forth all the way down, right? Now something else that's kind of interesting here. If I clear these quick values, one other thing that I might care about is what are the desk ports being used in these conversations, right? Just run quick values on desk port. Let's take a look at that. So in all these conversations between internal IP addresses, the, the top ports being used, 4506, 53, 137, 443, so on and so forth. So I would have to kind of know what's normal in my environment, right? Looking for ports like PowerShell remoting, DNS activity, right? Um, different net BIOS ports, SSL, so on and so forth, right? Now, not knowing really what I'm looking for here could cause me to go down a rabbit hole because I might not be familiar with some of these ports and I might just start looking at this traffic and it might take me some time to realize that you know a lot of this is going to be completely normal and benign for my environment, right? Um, because unfortunately, the bad traffic that you're looking for might blend in with commonly used ports against normal services. But let's use, let's use a particular use case here as an example. So let's say for one reason or another, I'm interested in 3306, MySQL type of activity. Well, what I could do is I could simply add that to my query by clicking this little magnifying glass here. And you notice what that's, what that's done is that's added desk port 3306 to my query and let's hit go to refresh my results. 
All right, so quick results are a little bit less, or quick values here are now a little less useful because of course I'm only gonna see 3306. So let's clear that out. Let's go back to my source IP quick values. Who's talking to port 3306? All right, these two source IPs are talking to 3306. Well, I don't know if that's normal or not. Um, you know, I might have to do a little bit further context awareness to, uh, to figure that out. So let's add, again, our dest IP as a stacked field, just to see what that looks like. Okay, now this is a bit more interesting, right? Because right off the bat, I can see a very clear distinction between these source IPs. So this source IP here, let me zoom in here a bit. This source IP is talking to this dest IP quite a bit, right? Quite often. We see 97% of the results were attributed to those two talkers. So still without some sort of network diagram it's really difficult to say is that normal all right now i would tell you that if i could show you the diagram right now the uh the source ip is actually a web application server in the dmz the dest ip here is a mysql server back in the uh in the uh corporate sort of data center the the server subnet so that actually would be normal activity because the web server has a back-end connection to the SQL database. So I would expect to see a lot of traffic between those two IPs. Now, this activity that you see down below that, this is interesting because what you're seeing is one source IP talking to many dest IPs on port 3306. Now, again, just kind of showing you behind the curtain here, we only have one MySQL server in this network, all right? And it's the 42.33 IP address. So when I see a single IP sweeping many different dest IPs for port 3306, that's usually something that's gonna indicate a port scan of some sort, right? Someone's trying to discover services in my environment. So let's kind of zoom in here and just continue looking at these results. Notice how many distinct IP addresses we see here. I mean, quite a few, quite a few, and also very low connection counts, right? So that is another thing that would indicate simple enumeration scans, right? Where there's a very low connection count spread across many different destination IPs. So this is very highly likely to be some sort of port scan or a, uh, a network sweep. So that's definitely something to, uh, to look further into. But what I'm illustrating here is how useful quick values can be in identifying this sort of activity.